Today we're going to take a look at Cisco Security Device Manager or SDM feature. And this is a feature or service available on their newer routers, like the 2800 series model we're going to be testing it on today. You won't find that on their older model routers like the 2500 or 2600 series. But what SDM or Security Device Manager allows you to do is to connect to your router over HTTP or HTTPS so you have a graphical GUI web browser interface and you can use that to actually configure your router. Now, you can't necessarily do that right out of the box when you take, you know, when you pull your router out and start setting it up. The initial setup, you, you're still going to have to do it through a console port or auxiliary port, um, you know, and use a DB9 connector and a USB to RS-232 9-pin serial connector uh, and a rollover cable if necessary. Um, but once you do the initial configuration, the initial setup on the router, from that point on, once it's on the network, you can just open a web browser on any host and connect to your router via a web interface and, and it's, it's a very nice tool for configuring the router. In addition to Secure Shell and Telnet and all those other wonderful features you can use to connect to your routers with. However, it requires some initial setup. So let's go ahead and do the preliminary setup and we'll choose one of our perimeter routers on a stub network. So in this case we will pick the Galactica right here. The first thing we need to do is log into a router via the console port and set up IP addressing and the web server on that router's interfaces. To set up DSM access from the console port, you must perform these steps. First, set up the web server. To do this, go to privilege mode with the enable command. Go to global configuration mode with the config T command. Once in global configuration mode, use the command IP HTTP server to set up the normal web server over port 80. Then use the command IP HTTP secure dash server to set up the secure web server over port 443 to connect with HTTPS over SSL. Finally, use the command IP HTTP authentication local. Next, you need to create a user with privileges. To do this, from global configuration mode, use the command username, and then whatever you want to call the user, privilege 15 because you'll need that level of privileges, and then password 0 for unencrypted and whatever you want to call the password, in my case, Kiwi. Third, configure console and VTY connections. To do this from within global configuration mode, use the command line con 0 to select the first console port, and then specify login local. Next, select the virtual terminal port with line VTY 0 1180. Specify a privilege level of 15, and then use login local. Then finally, transport input Telnet and transport input Telnet SSH to enable both Telnet and Secure Shell. Let's configure and set up uh, SDM, or the Security Device Manager, on our perimeter router here on a stub network. And hosting Galactica, notice I already have an IP address set up on it. But let's pretend that you're pulling your router right out of the box, okay, and booting it up for the very first time. In that case, none of these settings would be configured, and none of the interfaces would be activated. So you'd take your USB to RS-232 9-pin serial adapter and connect it to your DBN9 uh, adapter and connect that to a rollover cable and connect to a console port. And then you'd use PuTTY or HyperTerminal to log in. So we'll do that. Now let's pretend that we're doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, return and type in my password. And I want to go to privilege mode with the keyword enable and my password Kiwi. And notice if I pull up my running configuration, there's my address, 192.0.7.10.1, but you won't see this and you won't have this right out of the box. Okay, um, I'm going to go to global configuration mode. And one of the things you can do on the newer model routers, the newer series of routers, is use the do command. And I can do show run right from within the global configuration prompt. Some of the older uh, model routers, older series routers, um, you know, don't support the, that command. And so you'd have to drop down to privilege mode and then you can do show run or show start or show IP route or whatever. Um, I try to keep things backwards compatible with older model routers and older equipment where possible. So I don't use those commands very frequently. But just be aware that the do command is there and available to you as an option if you choose to use those uh, privilege mode commands from within global configuration mode. Okay, so Again, pretending that we don't have an IP address configured, the very first thing I will need to do is set up an IP address. So to do that, I want to select an interface. In this case, I'll use the command INTF00. And the way that works is um, slot 0, port 0. And then I have fast Ethernet slot 1, port 0. And then if it was the second port, I could do um, in that slot, I could say F01. And that would be the second port 
in that slot. So just slot number, port number is the syntax. In this case, um, I'm, I've selected that interface and now I can configure it. So I'm gonna use the IP command and you would do this. You'd say IP address. And even though I already have one, you won't if you're just pulling it out of the box. So you'll set up your first IP, 199-207-101. Class C subnet mask. I'll set up a descriptive string, usually to describe, you know, connection to network 10 or something like that. You could type out the whole thing if you want. But. And then the last thing I'll do is no shut or no shutdown, and that will bring, you know, activate the interface and bring it up. And you'll just type that in internet and. If it really was shut down, then you would there'd be like two lines of output there. But again, since I've already configured mine with an IP and it's already running, you don't see that. It's already activated. But to show you what that looks like, um, I'll just type shutdown. And then I'll type no shut. And these are the two lines that you would actually get, okay, once you bring that interface up. So now we've set up a fast Ethernet interface to connect to via our hosts. And we have everything set up at least at that level to begin setting up the web server and the web interface. So with that done and that complete, let's exit out of interface configuration mode, go back to global configuration mode, and let's look at the steps we need to take in order to set up the web interface, the web server. First thing we we'll want to do is set up the actual web server itself. So IP, and then I would choose HTTP and server. And that'll do basically a, a simple hypertext transfer protocol web server over port 80. Then I want to do the secure server, and that's going to be IP HTTP secure server. And what this will do is give me uh, a secure web server. I'd have to connect to my web browser using HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash whatever IP address. It's going to be over port 443 using SSL secure sockets layer and TLS transport layer security. And notice it says down here, generating 1024-bit RSA keys. The keys will be non-exportable. And this is for the certificate and the authentication process when I make my HTTPS secure connection via my web browser to manage my router. Okay, so I've installed both of those servers. And then the next thing I need to do is basically enable HTTP local authentication. And the command for that is IP HTTP authentication local. Okay, and then once I've done that, I need to create a user account I can use to log in and manage the server with in my web browser. And the command for that is username, and you can name it whatever you like. Um, I'm going to name mine Starbuck. Username Starbuck, and I'm going to need, need to give this user full privileges to manage the router. So I'm gonna give him the highest or her the highest level of privileges. So privilege 15, and I'll give her the highest level of privileges. And then I need to configure for her a password. And it's gonna be an unencrypted password for maximum compatibility and Kiwi. In this case, I'll just keep using the same password I've been using. So now I've created a user, given her the full you know, the greatest amount of privileges that she can possibly have, and now she has a password to use to log in. And then the last few steps, I want to go and configure my console, my auxiliary, and my virtual terminal for uh, the login local privilege or ability. And I'll need to go ahead and set up, you know, things like Telnet, Secure Shell for transport and input. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the line command at the global configuration prompt. And the first one we'll do is the console port, I guess the most commonly used one console zero, and I just need to do login local to enable that privilege. Then I'll use the line command and select my auxiliary port. Um, same thing, I'm gonna do login local to enable that privilege. And finally, I'm going to select my uh, you know, VTY or virtual terminal for telnet port. So that's VTY. Different model routers will have different ranges. Um, for instance, older equipment, by default, you may have to select all lines, so it'll just be zero through four. So you'd say VTY zero four. Newer equipment, newer series model routers, it may be 1180. You can always use a question mark to get additional feedback or input from the router as far as how many ports and things that you have. But I'm gonna go ahead and select that port. And once I select that port, I wanna set the privilege level. This is a little bit different from console and auxiliary. 
So privilege, and again, the highest level of privileges. And, oops, left off the level there. Notice the carrot there, it kind of points the way. It tells me where, so privilege level 15. And again, I want to do login local. And the last last thing I need to do is set up, um, in this case, my input for Telnet and secure shell if I want to use that. So transport, and I'm going to do input Telnet. And oops, we add secure shell there. Okay, so this is pretty much everything that we need to set up our, our web interface, our, our web browser interface to our server. And I just want to go ahead and do Control Z, go back to privilege mode, and I want to copy everything. Copy the running configuration to the startup configuration, so I don't have to do all this over again. I'm going to lose our hard work. Exit out, and now we're ready to test it out. Now that it has been set up, let's log into the SDM with the web browser. So this is the web page interface and what you would actually see. Notice it, you know, much like doing a show startup configuration command, it gives me the IS version, SDM version, model type, amount of available memory. Very, very nice, very convenient interface, I must say. Um, one of the more useful items here would probably be the configure tab. And from here, probably the first thing you would go to would be interfaces and connections and edit interface connection. Uh, and notice some of the things that we can configure here. We can enable and disable interfaces. Um, let's look at our fast Ethernet connection here. We'll click on edit. We can change the IP address and the subnet mask. We can enable and disable it. Of course, I wouldn't want to do that because it would kick me off because I'm connected to that interface through my web browser. And changing it, would kinda, I'd kind of lose connectivity there. But I'm able to manage and do just about all the things that I would do from you know, a console or auxiliary connection now through my web browser and able to do it graphically. So it's kind of a nice feature and you can compare that to you know, Microsoft has similar tools where you can manage their server products over the web. And I, th I think Novell probably were pioneers in that area using Java and a web interface to manage Novell Netware and Novell Networks and things. So it's just sort of similar functionality there, and a very useful feature on the newer series uh, of routers, like the 2800 series.